And joining me on the podcast and on video, it's Vadim Alexander, Head of Healthcare, SP Angel. You're Vadim. How are you doing, Justin? Yes, I love it, Jason. I love that mint green shirt. A uh, uh, jumpy wearing there. And you're a bit warm today. The, 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 uh, it's kind of still uh, cold in the morning, but yeah, no, getting warmer outside for sure. I don't want to say. Just nice. my, my, yeah, my son has come home. It's, it, it's funny that the weather's just turned, you know, uh, more positive, brighter, mm-hmm. warmer. And my son came home with a stinking cold, gave it to me. My wife never ever catches a cold. I don't see why I always get it, you know, and she just says I'm a hypochondriac, which I am. Mm-hmm. I think they um, call it the man flu, don't they? So, yeah, it's a lot yeah. worse than the uh, lady flu. Um, look at that chart there, Vadim. That's the aim all share, right? And I've, yeah. I want to highlight something here. So we are breaking sort of, uh, you know, pretty much highs since uh, we go back to, when is it? Uh, June 2023. So summer last year, it hasn't been this high. And then, then it was in a downtrend, pretty much. But yeah. We've got the 50-day moving average, which, which is the the, the blue. Yeah. Uh, the 200 day, which is the, the, the red, which is curving around and flattening out. Golden cross here. Breaking previous highs. Now, the RSI, which is relative strength, some people say over 70 is overcooked, overbought. Not necessarily. You tend to get a good rally above 70, uh, 70 on the RSI. And I go back to this example here, the last little rally we had from October up until, when is it, uh, January pretty much, or December. In fact, the end of the year, and then it rolled down. But if you see here, it was at, it's at 76 now the RSI is. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, if you go back here, it was at 76 and it broke through that big day and it went up another sort of 5.45%. Now we only need an extra 2.85% to get to a technical bull market mm-hmm. on AIM, which is a very good sign. And I think we're going to do it. Look at that. Out of the last 16 sessions, we've had 13 that are pretty much positive. That's a good sign, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And it's long overdue, quite frankly. It's a- Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So, so, if someone said to me, Oh, isn't you know interest rates not going to be down yet? Hasn't the market got a little bit ahead of, ahead of itself? I said, hang on, it's still down forty percent. Yeah. That's high. That's yeah. that's almost a thousand days ago. So it's a yeah. long bear market. It's been a big drawdown. So I don't think it's getting ahead of itself. Exactly. And the other thing is, if you look at the FTSE one hundred, right? So that's yeah. finally starting starting to rally, right? It's had a, it's on a tear. But the yeah. FTSE 100 is hitting all-time highs now. Yeah, right? look at that. And, and it's long overdue as well because it's only starting to catch up with global indices, right? But, yeah. you know, if the FTSE 100 is hitting all-time highs and the AIM all share is still down 40-something percent, we've got yeah. a long way to go to catch up. Yeah. You know I mean, uh, uh, just uh, internally uh, within the UK markets. Absolutely. And I think, like I said, we've mentioned before that trickle-down does happen when people yeah. are a bit bit more comfortable with the markets, the yeah. markets go in the right direction. People tend to take on a bit more risk and go down the market cap spectrum towards, yeah. you know, smaller uh, companies. And so I right. think, uh, and I say it takes a lot less liquidity to move those stocks, you know, yeah. and I say it's like a capillary system pretty much. It, you know, start with a, a thick sort of veins where the water comes in at the top or the blood comes in and then, you know, they get thinner and thinner and thinner. So you don't need a lot of blood to move the market name, you know, a small right. amount of liquidity. When you consider we've had about 36 months of outflow, uh, yeah. all you need is that to stop and start coming their way. And they move very quickly. So, um, Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, like you said, it's it's just, it, not only is it long overdue, it's just still colossally underpriced. Like it's undervalued. Yeah. There's so many stocks. We'll talk about a couple today that are trading yeah. on ridiculous PEs and EVs, you know what I mean? To say yeah. EV to, you know, EV to EBITDA the ratios. Um, so, you know, it, it's it's inevitable that at some point things turn around because it just, it doesn't make any economic sense in an up market, right? Yeah. I, 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 I've said a couple of times that, listen, this is, um, you know, we, it was hard to guess the bottom down here because you get the V shape tends to be not sustainable, but you've had this now sort of range, uh, which has been quite nice from, January, uh, you know, to pretty much, uh, when is it, May, April, May, and it's broken that. So you've had the consolidation after this rise, and it's powered up again, which is a very good sign. And I, I genuinely think this is probably, you know, coming out of a, a bear market, going to a bull market, is one of the best times to make money in the market ever. That's I mean, the best situation ever set absolutely. up. Uh, and, you know, it's it's a one in a decade, pretty much, or one in five, seven years sort of opportunity. And like I said, normally, you know, bull markets last five to seven years. The last one, powered by central banks and zero interest rates, lasted over 10 years. That's quite unusual. Uh, but I think now we're going to be in for a nice sort of bull run next three, five, seven years. And so we are still relatively, you know, at the bottom, 
pretty much. We only move about a 15, 16% up off the bottom. So there's plenty right. of room to go. So I think, yeah, looking around for companies now, decent companies that are undervalued is where it's at uh, because hopefully they'll power ahead for months, even years, maybe, you know? So um, particularly okay. so, in the small cap spaces, well, particularly in the UK and then yeah. particularly in UK small caps. And then over and above all of that, you have the added benefit of potential interest rate cuts in the future. Yeah, you exactly. Mean? So we got this bounce, and we've got that you know, tailwind there that's going to happen. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. All right. You mentioned a couple of stocks undervalued. Name name one. Yeah. So a company that just uh, put out uh, quarterly results is Beximco. Beximco Pharma. Ticker is BXP. So we act for this company. It's a uh, we're, we're broker to it. Uh, and this is just a company that's a serial outperformer over the years. They've their share price has been dragged down by the down market, but not quite justifiably. Well, you'll see in the in the valuation, not quite justifiably so. At least we think so. Um, wow. Yeah. So, so this 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 thing has just like been chugging along, doing you know double digit sales growth year in year out, almost you know for 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 over a decade. They listed on AIM in two thousand and five, I think. So they you know committed to AIM if you like, uh, and, you know, have just serially delivered. Um, they've, they've had some time, some moments where profitability has been slightly pinched, but always profitable, you know? Uh, and I think the, 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 the reason why they, they get, just get lumped in together with biotech and all the, bi all the healthcare stocks uh, is just because they, they are based in a foreign jurisdiction, which is Bangladesh, right? So sometimes people look at you know, foreign uh, jurisdiction risk and say, well, let's just throw that in with all the other, you know, the rest of the sector that's down uh, and ignore it for the time being. But if you look at the actual, what the business is, so they're in this area of generic drug manufacturing. This is like, I'm sure you've heard of I India has been one of the largest players in making drugs cheaply, right? So drugs come off patent, you know, all the Pfizer's of this world make patented drugs. Once they come off patent, they then get picked up by generic drug manufacturers. And those drug manufacturers are all about price competition. So getting the price the lowest possible, obviously maintaining the quality because you can't sell into Western markets unless you have a GMP, you know, all the, all the typical certifications, FDA certified facilities and all that. So India has really championed that. But uh, India more recently, and so in the last 20 years, has been facing you know stiffer com stiff competition from countries around India and Bangladesh is one of them and this company sits right in the middle of it they're one of the top ten uh, Bangladeshi generic drug manufacturers uh, the beauty of all that is generics are kind of steady you know they people need drugs they're, it's the most acyclical sector it's just you know people need their paracetamol it's not going away it doesn't matter you can almost predict how much paracetamol people are gonna, you know, be buying year in, year out. So they're they're makers of all those types of generic drugs. Their large market is their domestic market. They also do uh, exports to about 40 countries all around the world. It's proper business. They, they, they have like 350 million, I think, in revenues um, and some 50 million in profits, sterling. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, ballpark, yeah, yeah. ballpark. And it's amazing I, when you see um when you see uh you know the 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 Generic. So, so when, when, when typically, I, I, I suppose it must change when these big pharmacy companies, you know, have a patent. How long was that last for? Is it 10, 20 years? Well, how long was that yeah, last? it's a 20 year patent, but it's from the first day of kind of filing of the new chemical entity. So basically, it's at the beginning of the, um, uh, whole trials process, if you like. Oh, okay, so it's not so, from commercialization. It's yeah, exactly. Commercial. So yeah. it takes yeah. about 10 years, let's say, to yeah. get a drug to market. Uh, from when you patent it, and then you have about 10 years run of marketing a drug, right? Yeah. Um, but this is after all that. This is once they come off patent. A lot of other companies, generic drug manufacturers like this one, then get involved in the big drugs, you know what I mean, that are out there, taking them into... So drugs normally come off patent, they lose about 95... The pricing power drops by 90%. Okay, so it goes from whatever ten quid a, a dose. I'm just using as a to one quid a dose per patient dose, right? Yeah, so, you can see that. In, I mean, if you in shops, for example, and you look at a, a brand, uh, but sometimes I don't know if it's, it, this is the case. But I mean, no. a brand of painkiller, and then it's no. like five quid, and then you can get the generic, which is you know that, um, ninety nine pence or something. Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. You've got. That, I mean, that and that's even branded generics so like that's yeah. like neurofen versus oh yeah boots. yeah you know so if you look at neurofen versus the boots brand 
You're yeah. right. There's already a, a five time difference there. Uh, but this is a this is a step further in that there's novel drugs like let's say take a statin for example. When a statin yeah. comes off patent, well, and they all have now, they become you know they they, they drop down substantially, and yet they're still prescription products, right? It's the generic prescription product that that uh, a lot of these companies are involved in, and and that's it's its own space. What I like about this space is it's it's kind of a sure more acyclical thing. It's not they don't really depend on the vagaries of you know financial markets or anything. Well, they, the share price does, but the the actual core business doesn't. You know, the core business is is kind of a salt. It's it's a traditionally acyclical sector. Uh, it's proper healthcare. It's one of the areas that healthcare kind of protects against the cyclicality of other sectors. So it's non-cyclical, um, unlike biotech, which is super cyclical, right? Because it's dependent on capital. This These businesses aren't dependent on capital. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah. back to valuation, uh, j- just the fundamental point, back to our initial point, which is AIM and, you know, the AIM all share or, you know, small caps in the UK is littered with good companies, small, good, well, this is not a small business. This is quite lar- quite a large business by by AIM standards. Um, but they're just, they're ignored because they're small caps. And for example, healthcare, they're like I was saying, they're lumped in with the biotech market, but they're trading on ridiculous multiples now. So this one's trading on an EV to EBITDA multiple of like single, low single digits. I think it's like a PE of five and if yeah. EV to EBITDA of one or two. You know, it 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 doesn't make any sense, uh, yeah, and it's seen it's seen its share price is is uh, you know at multi year lows thirty five thirty six p. They've seen highs of one twenty p. You know, in the bull market, uh, yeah. so you can see how in a recovery, stocks like this are going to recover. You know, what yeah. I mean? Well, look at that we got, on the thing there. I don't know if you one of the analysts there. But, uh, it says that even the minimum target is two hundred and fifteen percent up. Uh, the average is two seven three. And the maximum is three hundred percent up from uh, where we are right now. Strong buy, uh, recommendation, all that. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, you can see that the earnings per share is going up nicely, and uh, revenues go up nicely. So mm-hmm. it's uh, yeah, it's an uh, Im- impressive little thing. And, and uh, it, it, as I say, it's come off massively. I mean, look at the chart there. Yeah, and I, th- I think if it breaks above that almost uh, forty-five pence level, I think it's going higher because that's it's struggling to get above that. And you can see there on that line. In fact, yeah. let me move. And I'm moving up a bit, so there's a fake break there. Because if it closes above that, I'll get alerted now on that. So recent high, 45 pence. Look out for that. Momentum will kick in probably, and uh, yeah, it'll, it'll look quite good. Uh, it's definitely one that will be carried like disproportionately by markets improving. Do you know what I mean? Because it's, yeah. it's it's fundamentally a good business. It's been around a long time. It's been around on AIM a long time. So you know, for people who look at foreign businesses. You know, there are risks with foreign businesses, of course. There's exchange rate risk. There's, you know, um, political risk. Uh, I mean, Bangladesh had a had a um, uh, a new, sorry, an election recently, which puts kind of the political risk behind it as well. So, you know, that 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 may have been a moment which had, uh, was holding shares back, but that's now behind them as well. So, you know, it's these companies that I think we have to keep following and, you know, keep our eyes on because... You just shouldn't have a stock trading on such a low multiple. Uh, that's yeah. that's delivering, you know. Yeah, uh, I mean, look but at it's that. purely market related. It's market yeah. related. That's why these yeah, stocks. Abso- yeah. yeah, absolutely. Look at the revenue progression there. Look, just up and earnings go up. Uh, so uh, yeah, so look at the annual. So it's a little dip there, it's coming back up. But yeah, um, yeah it's uh, absolutely yeah, it's um, impressive. Okay, and uh, okay, what's the next one, Vadim? Uh, so one we we've covered many times here before is Spectral MD, Spectral AI. Oh yes, the, the yes, fast exactly. of the of the of the listing in the Nasdaq and uh, yeah, the shorting yeah. and go well yeah. What, so what happens? Explain the backstory in, in it. Just give us a, a quick uh, overview of the company. Yeah, and then ex- explain what happened with the shares if you could. Yeah, correct. So look, the company basically what they do is they're an AI company that specializes in wound imaging. So they take. They have a camera, it's a highly, you know, high spec camera. That's it right there. You've got a picture of the device. They take a picture of someone who has a burn wound, for example, or another type of wound, which is called DFU's diabetic foot ulcers. So people, you know, with diabetes have ulcers on their feet that don't heal. They become infected and then worse things get happen, like, you know, leads to amputations and things like that. 
But their, their primary uh, first indication is burn wounds. And they this is the company that has a $250 million investment um, from, uh, it's a granting agency in the US called BARDA. Okay, mm -hmm. so they've put in 100 million into the development of this product to date, uh, a little bit more already. They've committed another 55, which the company is working through right now. And then they have another 95 after the product gets approved by the FDA. Uh, and, you know, so far, so good. They've, they've been delivering on all their um, uh, gates to get yeah. their, their financing. So, you know, you've got 150 already committed, another 100 roughly behind that. Uh, and the market cap of the business is 30 million, okay, wow. dollars. Wow. So how is this possible? You know, how does this happen? And, you know, part of the part of the problem historically, and you say you want me to take you to the history, is they did a SPAC deal uh, on the NASDAQ. So they were on AIM originally. They moved to NASDAQ via SPAC. SPAC is just a shell uh, on, on uh, NASDAQ. It's what we call shell deals. They did a shell deal there. Um, and SPACs, unfortunately are quite can be quite toxic and here we have it i think it was a you know it was like so many shells that a toxic shell in the end shares got hit pretty hard um and the problem in the us and i'm learning this myself like 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 so many other investors in the uk is that you could then have this kind of place where shorters get involved they like getting involved in post spac companies right yeah. and my understanding is you've got companies like Citadel shorting the stock. And, you know, uh, there, there's been a lot of news around Citadel recently. Uh, they're a pretty big fund in the U.S. Um, involved in this Trump media, you know, the Trump world. Oh, yeah, yeah, group. yeah. So, so they've been, they, they, they did a SPAC deal too. And Citadel particularly likes SPAC deals to short afterwards. Uh, and the debate is whether they're shorting, doing naked shorting, which is apparently illegal and well, which is, if they are indeed doing that, it's an illegal activity. Naked shorting means that you sell stock that you haven't borrowed. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, so yeah, so that's that's the shares are absolutely you know not reflective of the value of the business, and that's you know the reason we're talking about this today is because they put out quarterly results just a couple of days ago, uh, and everything is tracking fine. You know what I mean? They have they they're recruiting on their two lead indications, those the burn wounds and uh, DFUs. Um, you know, recruitment might be a little slow on the burn, but they they still reiterated their forecast of when they're going to submit to the FDA and get a, seek approval. So they're on track ish. You know, um, they have cash; they have about ten million in cash. But most importantly, you know, the Barda contract they they have revenues. You know, they're they're getting they're getting paid by Barda. You know, they're they're yeah. they're tracking towards their uh, forecast of getting twenty eight million dollars in revenues from Barda this year. So. You know, if you look at the BARDA contract and you say to yourself, what's a $30 million biz uh, market cap business doing getting $28 million this year from BARDA? Mm. See what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it doesn't, it just, it doesn't stack up. So clearly there's some technical issue in the shares. I think we know that there's almost certainly some kind of shorting going on in the stock by the likes of Citadel, uh, maybe others. Um, we, we don't know for sure, you know, whether it's Citadel. I think... There's reason to suspect it is. Um, and I guess at some point, there has to be some break of revaluation. Either the shorts get broken, uh, and then often you see a rally. But at these valuations, it just makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense to be a 30 million market cap business, uh, you know, with basically with substantial revenues ahead of them on an existing contract. Yeah. Well, look at that. I mean, again, uh, three analysts offering targets here. A minimum of 73%, maximum 512%. So the average is at 239%. Yeah, it does seem... Uh, I, 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 it's nuts. If, if, if Citadel are, you know, assumed to be doing this, how isn't someone doing something about that? How can they do it if they are naked short? Surely that's easily found out by the SEC or someone. Well, so the beauty of this whole Trump world thing is that they've put a big spotlight on Citadel. Right. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, so basically what Trump World's saying is everyone knows Citadel is involved in these shorts. It's terrible for retail in the U.S. So this is all a U.S. problem. Right. This doesn't happen as much here. Yeah. Um, but, you know, retail investors like small companies like this. And rightly so. This is a good small company. It's it's delivering. It's it, it shouldn't be worth this. This it shouldn't be worth this much. It should be worth a lot more, yeah. we believe. OK. 
But my main point is small investors like playing in these small companies and they're right to pile into this one. But Citadel knows that and they love the liquidity. And so effectively, you're seeing a trend, you know, the, the whole debate about shorting and naked shorting and all that is it, there's an element of market manipulation here. If you have a big, one big player, you know, moving the shares and then just taking all the gains off the table of a retail rally. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. that's effectively what happens here. Um, I'm just surprised there's no, no, who knows? I don't know. Maybe there will be action taken, but certainly Trump, Trump has made a big fuss about this specifically with this institution and it's shedding some light on it uh, in, as to what happens in these small counts. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, it is annoying. It's like uh, as if investing wasn't hard enough. You get these people yeah, exactly. around, manipulating the market, you know? Yeah, I mean, look, look, it's a big accusation. I'm not, I'm not making any accusations here. It's just, it's, it's now out there for Trump world, and that's what the they are accusing each other. You know what I mean? Trump, Trump, yeah. Trump world, and and or whatever it's called, their media, the, his media company that that floated um, Truth Social. I think his, uh, you know, his um, his platform was floated through a media company. Um, so that's that. It's that company versus it's Citadel, and it's you know it. It's pretty acrimonious. You know, I don't know what it's going to get where it might end there. One thing I found interesting is the stock rallied when they kicked a fuss about it. Okay. So, really? so Trump, so truth social, it's called truth social, not Trump world. It, oh, I think okay. it's called truth social. If you can find the, the, um, the uh, ticker. Well, I got, no, I, got, uh, I managed to find the DJT. Is that, isn't that it? Uh, they have, Trump they have a top co that's not true social. It's something else. Okay. It's, it's called something that came else. off. Trump oh, Media, that's it. That's it. Trump Media and Technology. That's the one. Yeah. So, yeah. So it, it, it rallied massively. I saw it and then gap it up. And then all of a sudden it just came straight back down. So, yeah, uh, obviously, but it's got no, this has got like, hasn't it got no revenue or anything like that? It just, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not supporting Trump's yeah. ideas of uh, what his value, the value oh, of his yeah. company. It's more that the, the, the fact that he's highlighting it has yeah. brought attention to this issue. You know what I mean? Because they are so loud, you know what I mean? He has so much exposure. Um, it, it, before them making a big, before they made a big deal out of it, it was all speculation and people talking. Now that they've made a big deal out of it, it's interesting that Citadel is reacting. And I do find it interesting that Citadel seems to have changed its, its trading in Trump media. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it, they've got a little heat that the unwanted heat, you know what I mean? Yeah. Look at that. My cap, 6.73 billion debt. Six point seven eight. Uh, oh, oh, six point seven million. I, I think that might there. be a mistake, though. I'm not. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but nonetheless, I did, on, uh, I, I did see someone on CNBC saying that um, it does like a, a dollar in revenue, <laughs> one dollar. <yeah>, yeah. <laughs> so it's like it is mad. The world of Trump is completely mad, isn't it? You know. No, I mean, uh, look, the, 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 the valuation of that business makes no sense. It makes no, no sense. Yeah, but but the yeah, flip side about about naked shorting and trading, you know, down stocks, is you get. On, on NASDAQ, there is a long list of companies that are post-SPAC companies. So basically, I imagine these shorters, like a Citadel, for example, have a very simple model. They have algorithms, okay, that trade yeah. heavily in these stocks, okay? So they probably say, we're looking for three parameters or four parameters or whatever. We're looking for a post-SPAC deal, okay? Yeah. Because often post-SPAC, you've got people selling from the, the shell, right? Mm -hmm. And that creates kind of a little bit of negative momentum. Yeah. So that, it allows their al their algorithms to, to, you know, cling to that, on that. Yeah. and start the start the, the kind of negative loop, if you like. Um, and they're looking for liquidity and probably a few other things. But the yeah. SPAC, the high liquidity, and the fact that it's a small market cap are, you know, three parameters that they don't even care what the business is about. It just works well for their algorithms, right? Yeah. Well, and they find a system that makes money. Uh, yeah, the thing is, it's got to be legal. But if you find a system that makes money, you, you stick with it, didn't you? you know? it's, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's uh, the debate. You know, are they doing something illegal or not? Is it naked shorting? I don't know. That that's the yeah, debate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think um, out of the three there, you know, Trump Media, um, Spectrum MD, and was it Biomentis? The other one was it uh, BX? Was it BXP? Uh, yeah, BXP is the ticker. Yeah. 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 Oh, 
But Mexico, I think, but Mexico and, and Spectre MD are pretty a lot better value than Trump. I yeah, know, so. yeah. I mean, that goes to show. <laughs> Mexico has nothing to do with any of this shorting stuff. No, it's no, just no. it's a name company. Spectral yeah. MD is, uh, you know, it's just worth highlighting that the valuation is totally distorted, uh, and the okay. question is why. And yeah. we, what we do know is there's a shorting problem in post SPAC stocks in the U.S. now, and yeah. you know they are likely victims of it. Yeah, which means well, there's a look- technical dislocation in the stock price, and yeah, you can tell look- that in terms of the valuation. You've got 250 million dollars going into the biz- this business, and there's a, it's worth only 30, and it does 28 million in revenues. How does that make sense? Yeah, well, BXP, I quite like that the chart. The fact that it's, it's rallied so strongly before, I'm assuming that was due to COVID, wasn't it? Uh, this COVID rally. Yeah. But you know, there's hype around that. But let's be honest, it's a stable business below that. It's not. It's not all about COVID, you know. So, right. um, so you may see that you know rally again, but it is, seems to have flattened out here. The chart seems to have bottomed out and it's bouncing yeah. on this bottom, which is quite nice. Yeah. And then you just want a bit of a rally now. Uh, marvelous stuff, Vadim. Thanks for that, and we'll speak to you next week. Thanks, Justin.